Query rewriting is where, rather than using the user prompt to retrieve relevant data, we first rewrite the prompt using an LLM. The hope is that we'll then get back better results. This video is part of a series on retrieval augmented generation where we've been exploring a variety of different techniques. In this video, we're gonna learn why rewriting helps, how to rewrite a query with OpenAI structured outputs, and then finally, we'll look at an evaluation dataset where we'll compare the retrieval quality when using the initial query versus a rewritten one. So why do we want to rewrite queries? So first of all, we can restructure oddly written questions, remove irrelevant context, and then introduce common keywords that are more likely to match against the database. Let's have a look how this works. So we're gonna launch IPython, and let's start with the query, how do I keep my plants alive while I'm on holiday? OpenAI's structured outputs works with pedantic models. So we're gonna import the base model from pedantic. And we're gonna create ourselves a class called rewritten query, and it's gonna have an initial query and a new query. And then we're gonna import OpenAI, and we're gonna initialize that. I've got my key already set in the environment. We're then gonna import from my utils file, a view and system rewrite. All this code will be linked in the description below, but let's have a look at the system prompt. So you can see we've got a bunch of information about how to go about rewriting the query. Now let's have a look how it works. So we're gonna call the new beta completions pass function. We'll pass in the name of the model and the messages. So the system is gonna be that system rewrite message. And then the query is gonna be the initial prompt. And then we'll set the response format to be rewritten query. And then it takes about a second to run. Let's have a look at what we've got back. So you can see we've got a parsed chat completion of rewritten query. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see under parsed, we've got the initial query and then we've got the new query. So let's just tidy that up and put it inside a rewrite query function. We'll indent everything and then pass in the response format from the parameters. And then we're gonna call the completion choices, get the first value message parsed new query. Now we're gonna have a look at the, the data set that we're gonna be testing this against. So we're gonna import DuckDB. We're gonna look at the, and we're gonna load the olympics.duckdb database. Let's have a look what we've got. So you can see we've got an index, we've got some embeddings that we've already created. We've got the text, that's the most important thing. And then we've got a URL and a title. So the most interesting fields for us are the index and the text. So you can see we've got index, this is like a, a chunk, a chunk of text. And then you can see we've got text from the Olympics opening ceremony, an article from there. I've sort of wrapped this all up in a class called search. So you can see we've got import.duckdb and openai at the top. Inside our initializer, we're creating a connection to duckdb. And then we've got a connection to OpenAI, you see running locally on my machine. Let's just have a look what that means. So we're using Llama CPP to use to run the mixed bread embedding algorithm and we're telling it that to use the GPU for as many layers as possible. Let's run that and you can see at the bottom it says I'm now running on port 8000. Let's come back to the file and you can see we've got a function called vector search. It's gonna take in the query. It's gonna get give us back three results by default. We're gonna compute an embedding for the query and then we're gonna find the closest matching documents to that query embedding. Let's go back to our IPython notebook and we'll initialize the search. Now let's have a look at the question. So this is our evaluation set. So you can see we've got a bunch of questions and then the value for each of them is which index should come back. And then the next bit is a score, which we're gonna ignore, but you can kind of see. So what was the weather like? The answer should be either index number five or index number 15. And if we scroll down, you can see we've got some other questions as well. Now we're gonna import the load questions function from our eval file. We'll load the questions from that JSON file of questions. And now we're gonna create the new question. So we're gonna call the rewrite query function. We'll pass in the question, we'll pass in our system prompt, and then the response format for each question in the questions dictionary. We're gonna speed that up a little bit because remember it takes about a second for each question and you can see it takes just over 20 seconds. We've got 22 questions in here. Let's have a look what the rewritten questions look like. So you can see most of the time, the rewritten question is a bit more detailed. It has more context. I wouldn't necessarily say they're always better, but they've definitely got more to them. It's gonna be interesting to see how well they work. So let's start by creating result one. Uh, this is gonna be, it's gonna have the question. We're then gonna have a, the index and the score. And then we're gonna get each index and score by calling the vector search on the question, pulling back the index and score, and then we'll call fetch all. And again, it's for each question in the questions dictionary. So these are the, this is for the initial queries. And then we're gonna go and update that to then look up the new questions, so i.e. the rewritten one. And we'll update that to result two, and that's gonna be the rewritten result set. 
Now we're gonna import some other functions. So we'll get as run and compare. We're gonna create runs. So runs, we're using this library called ranks and a run is basically where you ran the questions and you got some results. And then we're gonna compare those against the questions which are kind of the ground truth. And then we can call our compare function passing in the questions, the runs, and then the metric we're gonna use is hit rate. So I, out of those three results that we got back for each question, did any of them match the actual uh, answer that we saw in the questions. And you can see that Vector comes back with 77.3% hit rate and Vector Rewrite has got slightly better 81.8% hit rate. Now sometimes when I run this I get the same and sometimes the rewrite is slightly better. So it's by no means going to be better every single time we run it. Let's now have a look at that as a table and you can see here that most of them we've got, if we got it right, we got it right on both and if we got it wrong we got it wrong on both. But if we scroll down a little bit you can see that the rewrite for who was the oldest athlete, it did better uh, on the rewrite. And so what I kind of take away from this is that the initial way that we'd written the queries was pretty good to start with. And perhaps we need to come up with some really bad, uh, bad ones, but I was sort of struggling to, to figure out how to do that. So maybe that's a, an exercise for you to, to try out. But now you know how to do LLM rewriting in a RAG application, but that's just one technique. Check out the playlist up here for more.